please subscribe to my channel. Your subscription is very important to me. At the outset, Putin had control. The Black Sea belonged firmly to Russia, its waters patrolled by imposing warships that symbolize dominance and terror. But the tide has turned. Ukraine has flipped the dynamic completely, sinking Russian naval assets at the cost of a car. The secret to this reversal? Drones. As of May 2025, Ukraine's use of unmanned technology, especially the innovative Ingenuity drone, has allowed the country to relentlessly attack Russia's Black Sea Fleet. These drones have consistently taken down enemy vessels, large and small. Notably, they destroyed a ship previously deployed by Russia in its 2008 invasion of Georgia, according to Euromaidan Press. That vessel, along with over two dozen others, has been reduced to wreckage thanks to Ukraine's drone operations. Transport ships, whether intended for deployments to Ukraine or regions like Syria, are no longer operational. Overall, Ukraine has eliminated 26 ships from Russia's Black Sea Fleet, representing a third of its total strength, forcing Russia to relocate many remaining ships. Now, Ukraine is not just defending, it's projecting power in the Black Sea. Earlier in May, Ukraine made history by using a drone to shoot down a Russian Su-30 combat jet. This unprecedented event marked Ukraine's evolution in naval warfare. Unmanned vessels now play offensive roles once reserved for traditional forces. That drone launched a missile that struck the Su-30, instantly obliterating an aircraft worth over $100 million. This shift highlights the dilemma Russia faces. Putin's government has funneled billions into solidifying its presence in the Black Sea. Every sunk vessel is a loss, measured not just in strategy, but in hundreds of millions of dollars. And now that Ukraine is targeting aircraft with drones, Putin's risks have only grown. With each deployment of multi-million dollar hardware to the Black Sea, Russia faces the danger of losing it to drones that cost about the same as a luxury vehicle. How did Putin lose the upper hand? To understand, we must go back to 2014. That year marked the beginning of Putin's military aggression against Ukraine. Rather than launch a conventional invasion, Russia instigated unrest in key regions like Donetsk and Luhansk by supporting local separatists. Though Ukraine managed to push back those forces, it was distracted from Putin's apparent real objective, Crimea. At the time, Ukraine's naval strength was concentrated there, with around 12,000 of its 15,000 naval personnel stationed in the port city of Sevastopol. That port, once a crown jewel under Soviet rule, had suffered from years of underfunding. When Russia moved in, the neglected state of Ukraine's navy made the annexation nearly effortless. Russia's 2014 takeover of Crimea allowed it to seize 12 of the 17 Ukrainian navy ships in the region, including all missile boats and auxiliary vessels. Russian forces destroyed or disabled Ukraine's naval aviation, seized key facilities, and in some cases turned Ukrainian marines to their side. This annexation was critical to the full-scale invasion that began in 2022. With one move, Putin had removed 70% of Ukraine's naval capabilities and gained effective control over the Black Sea. Between 2014 and 2022, Russia invested more than $2.3 billion into transforming Sevastopol into a fortified naval hub. Dozens of warships, submarines and aircraft were stationed there. When the full invasion began, the Sevastopol-based Black Sea Fleet played a central role, enforcing a naval blockade of Ukrainian ports. This was devastating. Ukraine relied heavily on maritime trade, particularly grain exports, which comprise 40% of its pre-war revenue. Often dubbed the breadbasket of Europe, Ukraine helped feed one in every 20 people globally. Within a month of the blockade, Ukraine had lost nearly $28 billion in agricultural exports. Facing a war against an adversary spending up to $300 million daily, Ukraine needed a cost-effective military solution, fast. A conventional navy was not viable. Most of Ukraine's ships were lost during the 2014 annexation, and it lacked the resources to rebuild. Even if it had started construction immediately, eight years wouldn't have been enough to field a navy capable of challenging Russia ship for ship. Nor did it have the budget, especially under blockade. That's when an idea changed everything. In the summer of 2022, Brigadier General Ivan Lukashevich of Ukraine's security services proposed abandoning conventional shipbuilding in favor of fast unmanned attack boats. The goal? Cripple Russian warships at a fraction of the cost. Ukraine began converting existing patrol vessels and civilian boats into explosive-laden kamikaze drones, 
controlled remotely via Starlink, Elon Musk's satellite internet technology essential for long-range control. Though crude, this fleet of makeshift drones proved the concept. At roughly $100,000 each, these drones were a fraction of the cost of a single Russian warship, but they lacked speed and design optimization for warfare. That changed with the development of purpose-built sea drones, Magura V5 and Sea Baby. Unlike their improvised predecessors, these drones were tailored for versatility, reconnaissance, direct attack, even search and rescue. By 2024, Ukraine equipped them with missile capabilities. In May, a drone-mounted missile downed the Su-30. Though more expensive than earlier models, these drones still cost only $250,000-$300,000, far cheaper than Western missile systems like Storm Shadow or Atakmes. Ukraine's return on investment was staggering, hundreds of millions in enemy losses for mere thousands spent. The Magura V5, developed by Ukraine's Defense Intelligence Directorate and private contractors, had a range of 500 miles, a 705-pound warhead, and top speed of 48 minim per earth. Equipped with HD cameras and inertial navigation, it could operate autonomously or be directed in real time. Sea Baby, introduced in 2023 at a $240,000 price tag, started as a kamikaze drone with an 1,173 pound payload and a 620 mile range. In 2024, Ukraine added a flamethrower system for close range engagements, and later versions carried RPV 16 thermobaric rockets and Grad artillery. Both drones also gained anti-aircraft capabilities. By late 2024, Magura drones shot down a Milmai-8 helicopter with an R-73 missile, then downed three Su-30 jets with R-73 and AM-9 Sidewinder missiles, typically launched from fighter aircraft now repurposed for drones costing as much as a car. Sea Baby proved equally effective. In July 2023, it damaged the Kerch Bridge using two drones. Months later, it sank the Samum Corvette and damaged a patrol and reconnaissance ship. Though 2024 saw fewer Sea Baby strikes than Magura's, development continued. By year's end, some Sea Babies were armed with 50 caliber machine guns to intercept patrol boats and low-flying helicopters. These drones were also instrumental in reopening Ukraine's grain corridors. After Russia withdrew from the Black Sea Grain Initiative in July 2023, Ukraine used drones to force open a humanitarian corridor, defying Russia's blockade. For just a few hundred thousand dollars, Ukraine regained access to global markets and began earning billions again, returning immense value on minimal investment. Russia, unsurprisingly, responded. It deployed its own naval drones like the BBKN Odevanchik, a kamikaze unit with a 1,300-pound warhead. Yet due to geography, Russia's drones have limited effectiveness in Ukraine's landlocked north and east. Still, Ukraine's initial 85% success rate with naval drones fell to just 10% as Russia enhanced its Black Sea defenses. But Ukraine remains ahead, incorporating AI and autonomous features into its next generation of drones. Meanwhile, Russia is considering laws to restrict the use of artificial intelligence in military tech, limiting its drones to human input, while Ukraine's get smarter. But Ukraine isn't stopping with surface drones. In May 2024, it unveiled the Kronos, an autonomous stealth submarine armed with torpedoes. It can travel 1.86 miles underwater to strike targets, dive 8 and 20 feet, and travel at 31 mph submerged or nearly 50 mph surfaced. It can also carry up to 10 operators. More is coming. Ukraine's new Toloka underwater drone series, particularly the TLK-1000, can travel thousands 250 miles and deliver an 11,000-pound warhead using sonar and hydrophones to locate targets. Putin thought the Black Sea would forever be Russian territory. In 2022, that was a reasonable belief. Drones hadn't yet proven their naval utility in full-scale war, but Ukraine turned the tide. With Magura V5, Sea Baby, Kronos and more, the Black Sea no longer belongs to Russia. These drones are affordable, adaptable and rewriting the rules of naval warfare. So now the question is, how far will Ukraine go next? Can naval drones become the future of war at sea? What new innovations could Ukraine unveil in the coming months?